because I've got three drums of Jet A. We're gonna position some fuel out in Moonbill for a helicopter. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get those 185 kg big old drums of fuel into our airplane without a forklift. So what we have here are actually four-wheeler ramps with some uh, special plates welded on so that they fit into our tracks right here. And we're gonna roll those 185 drums up into here after we get these uh, generators that are not working out of here first. So what we have to do to prepare the cabin first is we're gonna get these seats out here. We gotta put boards down on here so that we're protecting the floor because these things we don't wanna damage. And just like I wanna stay safe and show you guys how I'm gonna actually tie these things down so that I'm safe flying, I need to stay safe when I'm browsing online. And I use Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of today's video. So I actually use Surfshark VPN personally. It's a service I've been paying for now for over a year because I actually use it here in Papua New Guinea. And if you're not familiar with what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. What that is, is it's a safe connection between your device and online. So it actually encrypts your personal data and your online activities when you're browsing online. So one really cool feature about Surfshark is you can have unlimited devices on one account, saving you time and money. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay these boards out first. Like I was saying, I don't want to damage the floor with these 185 kg drums of fuel. So another really cool feature about Surfshark VPN is, as you know, I'm not living in my native country, which means I'm missing out on being able to actually use my subscriptions like Pandora, Netflix. Amazon Prime. And what Surfshark allows me to do is actually change my device's location to say a country like Australia and get access to TV shows that I actually didn't have access to in the United States. TV shows like Friends is not available on Netflix in the United States, but if I change my location to Australia, now I can watch Friends. All right, I'm also gonna be wrapping this net over top of my drums of fuel just as an extra barrier of safety. And just like I'm putting this extra barrier protection over top of my drums, Surfshark actually has an extra barrier protection as well. It's a new feature that just came out that actually comes up with an online identity for you coming up with a new email address for those one-time use email subscription things that you have to put your email in, keep you from getting all those spam and phishing attempts. Don't forget to sign up for Surfshark. They've got a Black Friday deal going on right now. Six free months. Use my discount code of BUSHPILOT. So sign up today with the first link down below. So if you're wanting to start staying safe online, sign up today with the link down below. Save some money. All right, I'm loaded, I'm fueled, I'm ready to go for my flight tomorrow morning. Let me go show you all of it put together. Okay, I've got strapped down for this individual one. I've got those two strapped down. Then I've got my net over top of it. And then I think I have a little bit of cargo underneath and that's it. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yesterday, I fueled up for 1140 pounds of fuel. We've got 633 kgs on board. 555 of it is these drums back here. So 663 minus 555 is 108. So I have 108 that pod down there. And then the second pod, I actually have two seats, which equal up to 25 kgs, bringing us to a total of 1,517 pounds of fuel. 7117, that's 7170, so I'm, I'm wrong somewhere. Oh, 1520, there we go. That's why we do this, 17, there we go, now we're within three. We're gonna be going all the way up to, I think 16,000 feet on the way out there. We just had a volcano erupt yesterday over in the islands. So depending on if there is much ash out here, it's blowing exactly this way, so we will see. And yes, it is very warm in here and very humid. It's 37 degrees Celsius, 
At least that's what my temperature says at 8 in the morning. Fuel is on. Let's get started because it is, it is warm. No pressure's in to the bottom of the yellow, so let's introduce our fuel now that we're over 20 in the NG. And ITT tops out this morning at 666. All you superstitious people. <laughs> generator and alternator, props already forward. Get our all stations. We whack November Tango Kilo will be taxiing runway 28 for departure to the west. All stations we whack. Break. Moresby, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Moresby, good morning. Go ahead. Good morning, November Tango Kilo, taxi, we whack, Moon Bill, 1 POV. November Tango Kilo, copy taxi, no reported traffic. November Tango Kilo. All right, igniters, inlet, I idle. All stations, we whack November 10 kilo, rolling runway 28 for an outbound departure, heading 240 on climb 16000, we whack. Ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses are good. 33 degrees out at sea level, so we're looking at 1520. Rotate 63. All right, torque is set. We're a little bit below 720, so I'm gonna bump in a little bit of power. There's 50 knots, we're gonna continue. And there is 63 for rotate. Bump up our ITT up to 740, still a little bit low. Up and over 300 feet, we'll start getting rid of our flaps. There's 300 and over 90. So our speed's up, we're over 90, 95. We'll go zero degrees of flaps. This is an hour, hour and 10 minute flight, depending on the winds. Yesterday I flew out here, I had like a 17 knot tailwind, so made a great time. As I'm pulling my prop back, I'm gonna be watching my torque because now that I'm at sea level, that's really what I'm more worried about because I can over torque it if I pull it back really fast, it will spike up. If I pull it really slow, it just kind of, it bounces up a little bit, but then it kind of settles back down. We're bringing it to 2000 RPM initially. We're just gonna let our ITT kind of settle down until it stops moving. And then we're gonna just bring it on down to 720 for our climb out. Landing, engine inlet, and igniters. I'm not really seeing the volcanic ash like I was expecting to see. It was a pretty big eruption from the picture I saw. But when we get up higher, we might see that there's a layer and that there is actually. I looked on like the, not the ozone layer, but I, I looked on like the, on Wendy, there's a feature that you can see how much stuff is in the air. And it says that it's directly over here, and kind of up that way, and as the afternoon goes on, it should be blowing off, but I'm not really seeing much yet. Morsby 1267, November Tango Kilo departure. November Tango Kilo, Morsby, go ahead. November Tango Kilo departed on the hour, tracking 239er on climb 16000. Estimating overhead Hauna 39er. November, Tango Kilo, copy departure. Eric in H1010, advise maintaining 16,000. 1010, and advise when maintaining 16,000. November, Tango Kilo. Man. Now, when we get out to Moonbill today, I'm gonna walk around down to the school with you guys. So stay tuned to the end if you guys wanna see a little bit of their community and what their school looks like out there. I don't think I've ever walked around the school with you guys at this location before. Well, just looking out kind of this way and out this way, you can kind of see there's this like kind of dark line right here. If it is volcanic, it probably is volcanic ash, but it's so light that they didn't close. There's no notums. 
didn't have any reports or anything like that of volcanic ash all the way up this far. So the reality is it's so light. We get volcanic ash from two other volcano islands just down the way. And the way you can tell it's volcanic ash is it's kind of like, well, in my sunglasses, it's kind of like this yellowish brown, and then there's like this definite line. And you can see out this way, there's like a couple different really, really thin streaks. And it looks like I'm already over it now here at 6,000 feet. So it must be heavy enough just to come down and make it look kind of really hazy out, but I would definitely consider this a light ash for sure. So this right here is just my oxygen. Plug it in up there, turn it on down here. Then we can adjust this to whatever altitude we go to. I always bump it up a little bit higher than what I'm going to. I'm going to 16, so I'm going to put it at 18. If you're wondering, is it cheaper to go and up higher and use oxygen or to go lower and not use oxygen? It's like 50 bucks to fill up a bottle of like, I think it's like eight to 10 hours worth of use of oxygen. So it's way cheaper to use oxygen than to burn fuel. That's for sure. Well, I had to descend down to 12,000 a little bit earlier than I was planning on just because there was a really suspicious looking dark cloud over here that just looked completely different than everything else. So really mitigating my risks, not really sure if that was volcanic ash or not, but I went ahead and descended a little bit early. And really, as I started thinking, that's really what my job is more as more than just a pilot, but it's just learning how to manage risks and threat and air management, identifying different threats and then going, is this worth taking the risk and doing it? As you guys will see as we get in closer to Moonbill, Moonbill has a lot of swirling wind that happens all the time. So I'll have headwinds for my first half of my approach. I'll go past my committal area. And what that means is from this point on, I do not have enough room or power in this airplane to be able to get around and go around safely. What happens is the wind comes around and it swirls and it hits one wind, one the last hill. So you have a big updrafts and then right after the updrafts, now you have tailwinds for landing. Typically they're anywhere from four to five knots. That's pretty average. But my job is to identify a potential risk. Okay, here's the winds, here's what they're doing. They're this strong today. So I can probably imagine I might have maybe, maybe a seven or eight knot and really for me to be able to manage those is in my head, I'm coming up with, okay, if it's more than eight knots of tailwind, I'm not landing today and I'm gonna go all the way back kind of thing. Those are hard decisions to make early on, but the sooner you do make them, it actually relieves a lot of stress in your own life because you're like, you know, I buy it's uh, We have a limit of five knots of tailwind. So if it's six knots, I'm going around and I'm going back. It's just that easy. I don't have to make the decision in the moment going, oh man, you know, I really, I came all the way out here. Should Vertical I, track. should I, you know, press the limits? And that's how you can stay safe doing a job that's potentially dangerous in what we do every day. Heading on down at a thousand feet per minute. I've already put my, oops, there we go. Put it in here at a thousand feet per minute. Turn on this all the way down to 4,100 feet for a pattern altitude. And you can see ahead, there's this ridge, it goes up. That's all the way up to like 9,000 feet. There's a good chance that I'm gonna have to go off to the right of that. That's typically what I do. And then drop in a little bit faster right after that. But let's go over our strip chart so we can see what we're gonna expect for landing. All right, we've got moon bill, it's a class C, that's our own designation. Takeoff, we've got 150 kg penalty for takeoff, 664 meters long, and early final for our committal procedure. This runway, they've done a lot of work on it, and you'll see, I'll walk down to the airstrip today and I'll show you guys. But they've done quite a bit of work where they've dug up a lot of the ground, put in a bunch of rocks, and then put ground back over it, because it was notoriously soft. I've been stuck there twice, once when I was flying or once when somebody else was flying. And it's a huge pain to get a 5,000 pound airplane out of stuck mud that's, you know, a foot under the ground. It 
took me like an hour, not me, <laughs> it took all of us, a team of us, of people that were helping, digging it and pushing it out. It was a huge pain. Uh, we're coming in this direction from the north. We'll fly overhead into, into a right downwind. So touchdown zone is just 3%. Slope you can see, 3 to 4%. So I'm not going to add anything to my VREF coming in. And the profile is just this nice, kind of gentle going up. It's really not that big of a deal. And here's just a drone shot, so you guys can get a better idea of what it's going to look like. All right, I've got 19 knots of wind, so on my tail. So actually, I'm going to be going to the right of these mountains because my anticipation, these are just things that I'm thinking through, like I just was speaking with you guys, is do I want to, I'm going to be cresting over right at 100 feet kind of thing if I were to continue this rate. And then to have 19 knots of tailwind, it's going to have a lot of turbulence right on the other side of that mountain. So I'm just going to go off to the right of it, miss all that until I get a little bit further on up. So winds are dropping on down pretty quick actually now. It was 18 knots about 10 seconds ago and now it's only 12. But we're just going to continue off to the right. That way I can keep my descent all the way down. You can see this little blue arc right here. It's coming up really nicely to just about where I want to be. We wanted runway 12, so I'll put that into my OBS. 120. Now it gives us a nice line there showing exactly the direction that I'm going to be coming in. And setting this up is really handy when you're coming into a valley that's pretty tight if you have a lot of clouds, you can't see the runway, or if you're out here in the jungle and it's tucked down under the jungle canopy, you don't see it until sometimes like you're a half a mile from it. So getting a good picture on the screen going, oh, I should be looking for it this way, or here's how I'm going to line up, I'm just going to enter into my, you know, perpendicular cycle fly overhead, things like that. All stations, Moonbill 1267, November Tango Kilo 10 miles to the north, 7,500. Circuit time, 01 Moonbill. Turning final, 3,600. I typically get low here, so I'm going to do everything I can, and I think, honestly, I probably could turn closer to 3,700 because I'm pretty far out. I'm going to try that today. I'm going to force myself to turn at 3,700, see how it looks. And I might go, wow, this is just way too high, but I always feel like I'm just way too low and kind of come in flat initially. So I'm going to adjust that today. Orsby 6598, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Morsi, go ahead. November Tango Kilo is in the circuit, Moonbill, cancel SAR. November Tango Kilo, Moonbill, South, 780. November Tango Kilo. If you're wondering why, Ryan, do you cancel SAR sometime in the air and then sometimes on the ground? Well, when we have people that can communicate to get help on the ground, I cancel in the air, especially because it's just a huge pain out here to be able to get a hold of Moresby. Here's below 138 for the first notch of flaps. Not down to 4,100 feet for downwind. Winds are nice and calm here, just three knots from behind me. So that, if usually if they're coming this way, it swirls basically in this whole valley here and it will change three or four times in your circuit. We went 92 for downwind, 82 for base, 72 for final. Up about 4,100 feet. With 20 degrees of flaps. Actually, a little bit lower than I wanted. I'm at 3,720 feet now, so I need to hold this altitude. I'm going over to this ridge right here before I make my turn for my base. 1.7 nautical miles, a little bit further, actually 1.8, a little bit further than normal. That's why I'm adding on an extra 100 foot to my turning final altitude. 
a little bit of power now, slowing on down to 80. I'm going to go full flaps, checklist is complete. Here's our 82 knots, turning final. Looks like I'm 36.50, so yeah, even 50 foot lower than I was planning on being, so I'm just going to hold it for a second. Okay, yeah, this looks a little bit better. 36 just felt really low. On to 72 knots. Five knots headwind. We'll see if it turns into a tailwind. High 50 on the descent. That's perfect. Two knots ahead one, so it's already slowing down, so it'll probably switch just past my committed. One knot ahead one. 500. High 50 on the descent still. One knot of tailwind. See what I mean? <laughs> I was going to pick back up. I'm going to have an updraft right here. Not a tailwind, so not too bad. We're committed. A little bit slick out today, but not terrible. Well, stay tuned till I shut down because I'm going to walk down to the school with you guys. Yeah, definitely rained <laughs> last night. It's pretty wet, actually. With this short grass, it gets slippery. Let's do a quick walk around here at Moonbill. I don't know if I've ever actually walked around down here with you guys and shown you the school and stuff. And you guys can see here, they've done a ton of work on both sides here, all the way up on both sides because it's really soft here. If you get off the crown, you can see there's not really much of a crown here. Uh, it kind of just like goes all over the place. But I've been stuck down there. I've got off on that side once before and got stuck. My wheel just sunk in probably about 12 inches. Came out here with Jeff. He got stuck on this side over here about 12 inches. So it's no fun getting a 6,000 pound airplane stuck. We ended up just unloading the whole plane as quickly as we could. Got some shovels, dug it out as much as we could and then got about 10 or so, 15 people pushing on the wheels and the struts to get it out. So that's how you get a, a plane unstuck. From the mud. All right, these buildings over here are the school. We'll go look at those in just a minute. Looking down here, these little buildings over here are probably, I'm guessing, their bathrooms for the school. And you can see they've cut off quite a bit of that hill up there, which is amazing because it didn't used to be like that and it was a lot harder of an approach to get in here. But let's go check these schools out. All right, well, I guess all the kids are still in school, so I won't be too loud over here. But I'll see if I can pop my head in and take a look real quick. Sounds like they're doing attendance call in the other room we just popped in, so I didn't want to bother them, but we'll see if we can look in here real quick. Morning, I'll get that. Morning. Let's play them grade one in. Grade four, 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 five. four now five. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Now you play a one in today. Yes. English, yes. huh? Okay, nice. 
So you learn him lo write him our English pastime or lo talk talk pastime? Writing pastime na behind kiss him sabi lo talk. I'm now. All right. Thanks. Morning. I'm guessing that this is dorms right here for probably some of the older kids. Because the way a lot of these schools work is they have kids coming from a mountain, you know, all around here, maybe a couple miles away or so. So they come here and live full time and go to school, get an education. So yeah, it's just a little bit different than maybe the way that things are run in the States for sure. Morning, I'll get the... Now this play one in grade. Grade three. Three, huh? Yes. You play that all? Yes. Uh, grade four, now five in Big Plus. So. so a lot of these schools are government run. I think this one is government run. Um, other places like Yifki is not government run. They're all just self-funded from either the missionaries or people like yourself giving towards projects like this. I'd like to re-talk with the people out in Yifki and hear what their needs are. We did a, a fundraiser for that school a couple years ago. We were able to get them going on building their new school buildings. They have three of them now, but I think they still have a lot of needs and they're not funded by the government. So I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the future, but hope you guys enjoyed this flight out here. Um, I think this is the first time that I brought you guys out here in probably a couple of years. So give this video a thumbs up if you did, share it with your friends, people you think that might like this kind of content. Don't forget to sign up for Surfshark. They've got a Black Friday deal going on right now. Six free months if you use my discount code, Bushpilot. So sign up today with the first link down below. See you guys next time. Mm -hmm.